If you're learning to code right now, then I'm sure AI is something that's on your mind. And in today's video, I want to answer the question, should you as a beginner programmer use AI when you're learning how to code? Now, this is a highly debated topic. I have all kinds of people saying that you should, all kinds of people saying that you shouldn't. And in today's video, I want to break it down and make an argument from both sides reasons why you should, reasons why you shouldn't, and ultimately my thoughts and my opinion on this topic as someone who teaches millions of people how to code, specifically beginner programmers. So let's get into the video starting with the pros. So point number one in favor of using AI is that it drastically accelerates the learning curve. Now there's been all kinds of research out there and I can see this firsthand from many of my students. Those of them that use AI just learn faster than those that don't. That's because it can instantly reply to anything that you need and you don't need to wait for someone to answer you on Stack Overflow or for your teacher or tutor to give you a reply and it can adapt to anything that you ask it. So yes, you are gonna learn significantly faster by using AI and you can get through so many of those problems that otherwise would have taken you hours to solve or you would have needed to wait for some kind of reply. Now, reason number two in favor of using AI is that it really does reduce frustration. I know a lot of times when you're learning something new, you get frustrated with small errors, bugs, little things that you don't understand, where otherwise you would need to spend hours trying to look up the answer, need to find someone to explain it to you. But with AI, it can just instantly solve that problem. It can instantly help you overcome that little issue that you're running into. Now, I know when I was teaching coding, especially to younger kids, they were about 14 or 15, a lot of the times they got extremely frustrated because their code wouldn't run. And 90% of the time, it was a small error, like a missing quotation mark, a broken bracket, the indentation level was wrong. And if they could simply copy that code to AI and have that answer instantly fixed, that would reduce a lot of frustration and allow them to move significantly faster. Now, point number three in favor of using AI is that it massively boosts your productivity. Whether you're learning or you're trying to build something, using AI as a tool will help you do it significantly faster. It can generate code for you, it can solve problems, you can go back and forth with it to design the architecture of your problem or to ask it something that you don't understand. And I think it's not really debatable that if you have AI beside you when you're coding, you will code faster and you will get more done. Now, point number four is that it's fantastic for checking for understanding. You can get AI models to generate quiz questions for you. You can go into something like ChatGPT voice mode. You can speak to the model, explain some concept to it, and then get it to give you all of the inaccuracies or tell you how you could improve your understanding. I personally use this all the time. I'll go, I'll just say something to the AI model and say, does that make sense? Is my understanding correct? Is there anything that I could look at to better understand this problem or this topic? And it will go ahead and tell me exactly what that is. So if you're verifying the knowledge that you've learned, you can do that very quickly with AI models and really get them to quiz you and make sure that you do understand what it is that you're learning. Point number five is that AI is fantastic for debugging small problems. Now again, a lot of times as a beginner programmer, most of the problems you run into are syntactual. They're basic mistakes. They're things that any experienced programmer could figure out in five or 10 seconds. And you get very frustrated and oftentimes really lose your train of thought or your progress because you just can't figure out these tiny little problems. Maybe you spend hours searching Stack Overflow, when now with AI, you could just paste your code and have it pretty much instantly be fixed again, especially if this is a small problem. Now there's some cons associated with this, which I'll talk about later, but generally it's very great for debugging. And like I said before, getting over that frustration and allowing you to move on to the next topic. And now the last major pro on my list, and this is probably the most compelling, is that it prepares you for the future. Look, we all know that we're using AI more and more. Humans are becoming more resilient on it. It's getting better and better. And in the future, a lot of the code that's going to be generated will be written by AI. That could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you look at it. But if you are a beginner learning how to code, it's valid to say that you should probably learn how to use AI because that's something you'll be using more and more. Now, I think there's some negatives as well, which we'll get to in a second. But generally, the better you can get at using these AI tools, the better off you will be and that's another argument why you may want to use it as a beginner. Now we'll start getting into all of the reasons you shouldn't be using AI, but I first want to share with you a fantastic free resource that I put together in collaboration with HubSpot, which is a free guide on how to land a developer role in the world of AI. 
Now this guide draws on my over decade of experience and covers the top programming languages that you should master and the most effective ways to learn them. It also includes best practices for crafting your resume and portfolio and recommendations for resources like YouTube channels that you can use to enhance your skills. I've left a link to it in the description where you can check it out completely for free. Now personally, my favorite part of this guide is the long list of free resources like websites and YouTube channels that really can help you level up as a developer completely for free. This guide focuses on how to distinguish yourself in the world of AI so that you remain competitive and you can actually land a job. A massive thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video and helping me create this resource. And again, you can get it for free by clicking that link in the description. So the first major downside of using AI when you're a beginner is that it can lead to over -resistance. Resilience. If you use this too much, if it's an aid, if it's something you really need in order to get something done, then you can be left pretty hopeless when it comes to writing code on your own, or if you're in an interview, for example, and you're not allowed to use AI, how are you going to solve that lead code style question? The point is you don't want to become too resilient on this tool and you should be able to write code without it, which I think a lot of beginners really can't do today. Now, the next point I have here, I think is a pretty big deal. And this is that it hinders your logical thinking. Now, when you really rely on AI, when it does all of the problem solving for you, when it fixes that bug, when it overcomes that error, it really does limit how much you're learning and how good you're getting at problem solving and critical thinking. In my opinion, one of the biggest issues we have today is that students and especially children don't learn how to think by themselves. They're constantly just fed information. They memorize things. They have super short attention spans, like they can't even go five seconds without scrolling to something new. And now we get into programming where they can just use AI to do anything that they need. And they're really not developing that super important skill, which is critical thinking. I was seeing this even many years ago when I was teaching coding to kids. And today it's gotten significantly worse. And I even noticed with myself, someone who didn't grow up in the TikTok era, that my attention span is drastically decreasing. My critical thinking is getting worse. And I really think it's a pretty negative thing and something that we should consider and try to improve as best as possible. Now, the next point I have here is that AI makes it hard for you to read and write code. What I mean by that is if you're constantly using AI for code generation and for understanding code, you're not working your way towards that 10,000 hours that you really need of hands-on experience writing code in the editor. The reason I believe I got good at programming and most other people do is because they actually write code. They use their fingers, they go on the keyboard and they write it line by line hundreds, if not thousands of times. And that not only forces them to memorize what they're doing, but to get a lot of experience crafting programs, writing things out. There's all kinds of studies on this, but when you, of course, hand write something out, you comprehend it better. Same thing I believe when it comes to coding, when you write it yourself on the keyboard, you learn it better than if you simply have an AI model generate it for you. So again, we're moving towards an era where you are doing a lot more code generation than physically writing it yourself. But as a beginner, I think it's important to get a lot of experience with your hands actually on the keyboard where you are doing every single keystroke and writing the code out line by line. That will help you memorize the syntax and get past the basics a lot faster. Next major negative of using AI is that it can make mistakes. And in fact, it makes them a lot, especially as you get into larger code bases. If you simply rely on AI and you don't know how to do what it's generating on your own, you're not going to know if the AI model is giving you the correct output or not. And this is what I always say. Yes, we can use AI, but someone needs to verify that what the AI is giving us is actually correct. And the only way to do that is to actually know what to do on your own and to simply use the AI to get it done faster. For me personally, AI only ever generates code for me that I could have written manually myself. That way, when I read the code, I know if it's correct or not. And I fear that a lot of beginners don't actually realize that half the stuff that AI model is giving them is not correct. It makes a mistake. It's not solving the problem or satisfying the requirement. And there are many, many, many times I need to correct the model and tell it that what it just gave me is complete garbage and not correct. Now, the next major downside of using AI is that it doesn't teach you the best practices. Now, sure, it might teach you a concept, but a lot of times when I use the AI model, it misses a lot of important things that allow me to generate quality code. So for example, it might use something that's outdated from a framework. It might show me a way of doing something that works, but really should never be used in a production code base. Many times I find myself having to refactor the AI generated code myself because I know the way that it just wrote this is not something that's really proper and that I wouldn't want to exist in my code base. Now, if you're a beginner, obviously you're not 
not going to know that. So if you just learn everything from the AI model and you don't consult other resources or professionals in the field, you're going to be writing code in really not the best ways and things that you might be submitting, for example, for your first pull request could honestly be embarrassing, completely out of date or something that you should never produce as a real professional software engineer. And the last major negative that I thought was worth mentioning is that AI can pose a massive security risk. If you are copying and pasting production code, especially of maybe security based products into an AI model or using it in something like cursor or windsurf, something where it is connected to the internet, that obviously is a massive security risk, not something you would ever do and something that could very easily get you fired or cost your company millions upon millions of dollars. At the end of the day, we don't know what these companies are doing with our data. We don't know if our data is safe with them. And unless we're running an open source model completely locally on our own machine, that's not connected to the internet, there's no guarantee that what we're giving to these models isn't being sent somewhere else copied, used, being used to potentially hack us, etc. So a lot of companies for that reason do not even allow you to use AI when it comes to generating code. They have strict policies against it and they don't even allow you to take code and copy it into the model because again, that's a massive security risk. So something worth mentioning here and that you should definitely consider, especially if you get hired at a company and they tell you, oh, by the way, yeah, you can't use AI. You got to write it by yourself and you've never got that experience writing code on your own. So with all that in mind, let me give you my key takeaway here and overall opinion on if you should be using AI as a beginner programmer. So my opinion on this topic has changed over the years, and I'm sure it will continue to change as AI gets better and better. But as of now, January 2025, this is what I think. I do believe that beginner programmers should be utilizing AI. I think it's an important tool. It's something that's worth learning, but it's very important the way in which they do so. First things first, I do not think they should use AI for code generation. In other words, you shouldn't be getting an AI model to generate any code for you that you couldn't otherwise write yourself. You should really be treating it more like a tutor, an assistant, a mentor, someone who can guide you in the right direction, challenge you, ask you questions, check your understanding, but not something that just does the work for you. For example, if you were to hire me as your mentor, you wouldn't want me just to sit there and write all of the code to just directly give you the answer. You would want me to challenge you, ask you questions, guide you, really make you critically think and make you improve as a developer. And by the way, if you do want to do that, you can actually hire me as your mentor from the link down below. I have a program called DevLaunch. We have a few more slots open for any of you that are serious and you can apply for it from the link in the description. The point is you want this to help you get better as a developer, not just do everything for you. So be very careful when you're utilizing the AI tools and ensure that anything that it's giving you, especially if it's code, you fully understand. Now that's another point. A lot of times these models do make mistakes. So if it says something and you're not quite sure about it, please go and verify it with other resources. Watch a YouTube tutorial, go to Stack Overflow, do the things that us as developers have had to do for all of the years before AI existed to make sure that what you're using this AI for and the answers it's giving you are actually correct. And another point along those lines is that you really shouldn't skip all of the fundamentals of computer science and programming. Just because AI can write code for you doesn't mean it's not important to understand computer science principles, things like data structures and algorithms, time complexity analysis, programming language fundamentals, strongly typed languages, dynamically typed languages, all of those concepts you still do need to know. And even if AI can generate something for you, you need to be able to verify that what it's giving you actually accomplishes the task. And God forbid, if you want to get a job, you're going to be quizzed on those concepts and they're going to make sure you actually know what you're doing because in today's world, there's so many developers that really are completely clueless. Anyways, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me in the comments down below, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.